What um, what type of experiences did they have that they shared with you? Well, there's a whole range of experiences as well. It's in the literature from uh, uh, military people who have uh, had encounters in flight and uh, uh, been vectored to chase unidentified objects. People who have official positions whose job was to know about possible uh, extraterrestrial visitation and to do something with it. Uh, people within government. And uh, those are the more credible sources because they've had hands-on, first-hand experience with all of this. Whether they come forward or not is up to them. It's, uh, if they want to come out with their information, if they don't feel that they're under um, security constraints and they somehow get uh, relief or uh, amnesty from any uh, oaths of security, then I would hope they would come forward. There's a lot that does go on with these high security classifications under, under military rules. Uh, I think it's a fairly muddy area uh, when we're talking about this, this level of activity. <clears throat> uh, yes, there are, there are some stories that are uh, rather ghastly, as a matter of fact. Now, I can't validate those. I don't know that they're necessarily true. But like uh, many other stories, uh, they put fear in the hearts of people with, and that's perhaps why many of the people don't want to come forward. Well, my interest basically is what's the nature of the universe we live in? What is our relationship to the larger reality? If that's a part of the larger reality and we're denying it, uh, that to me is unconscionable. I don't live that way. If, uh, the, <clears throat> I went into space to learn about the universe we live in, to get new insights, to go beyond the boundaries of our known existence. And if uh, these phenomena are really uh, indi in indicators of new information about the cosmos at all and intelligent life in the cosmos and our ability to travel in the cosmos, um, as circumstantial evidence would suggest, then we ought to get to the bottom of it. It's just my curiosity that, that drives me. There seems to have been, over the last 50 years at least, and more, a great deal of secrecy surrounding the so-called UFO event. Uh, it's a very complex subject. We're not dealing with something that's very simple here. If we take the, well, we have sightings of all sorts. We've been reported thousands and thousands of sightings for 50 years or so. Large, number of the, large numbers of those sightings are indeed uh, misperceiving natural phenomena in some way. Uh, but a large number of them are not misperceiving. They are seem, or they seem to be, well-documented events uh, that represent flying craft that do not match anything we have in an earthbound arsenal, which is uh, very short of saying we have validated in the public domain that they are ET craft. <clears throat> we have to rely upon that uh, for to get better answers. We have to rely upon people who have been there and interacted uh, have first-hand data. The only people I know of that claim to have been in that position are former intelligence, military, and government people, and some contractor people, whose official duties in the early days were to investigate this and know about it. Those people are under, were under at that time great uh, restrictions and high security clearance that prevented them from telling the general public about it. Um, it would appear that period is long past, but they're still under security restriction, or at least believe they are. There have been ET visitation, there have been crashed craft, there have been uh, uh, material and bodies recovered, <clears throat> and there is some group of people somewhere that may or may not be 
associated with government at this point, but certainly were at one time, that have this knowledge and uh, <clears throat> have been uh, attempting to conceal this knowledge or not permit it to be uh, widely disseminated. So who do you think is in control of this knowledge at this point? I cannot answer that. I cannot answer who are these people, but <clears throat> there's a lot of evidence that points to a clandest what I call a clandestine group, uh, people who have some quasi-affiliation with government and <clears throat> use certain government facilities, but operate in a rather st very stealth and secret uh, secret way that uh, <clears throat> is not generally under high-level governmental control, as far as we can tell. Yes, there has been ET visitation, and may continue to be. There has been uh, craft that uh, have been recovered. There has been a certain amount of reverse engineering that has allowed some of these craft or some components to be duplicated, and that there are humanoids uh, from our planet, Earthling, who are utilizing some of this equipment in certain ways. And that perhaps a large part of the activity that's classified as UFO activity, abductions and a whole host of this type of activity, may very well not be due to ET activity at all. I would suspect if any is due to ET activity, it's a rather small part. <clears throat> and that a larger portion is due to uh, humanoid type activity, earthling type activity, in a very clandestine fashion. Could it instill a fear of... Uh... Well, I, I will stop short of, of attaching motivation to this. I don't know the motivation. But if it's normal human motivation, it has to do with power and control and greed and money and so forth. Those type of craft, humongous, very, very large craft, the size, so-called, or reportedly, the size of many football fields, uh, that would be very hard to manufacture, uh, conceal, and operate from an Earth base. It would seem, if that account is true at all, it probably would have to be uh, something beyond, uh, beyond this realm. I think it's long past time to open this up to the public because they don't know what to do about it anyhow. I do not see anything that suggests really malevolent intent on the part of uh, if there are ETs at all, and I have to place the caveat, if there are ETs at all, I don't see anything that represents hostile intent. We see things that, uh, like abductions, for example, that many would claim are hostile. Uh, to the extent that that may be true, I would uh, more likely attribute it to some other cause. There is evidence, there is a mountain of evidence, if you will, that essentially amounts to smoking gun evidence that has not been and seemingly cannot be brought forward at this point, at least not by the powers of government or not by what anything I know about, but it seems to exist. There is disinformation. The question of has it been kept secret or how could it be kept secret? It hasn't been kept secret. It's been there all along, but it has been the subject of disinformation in order to deflect attention and to create confusion so that the truth doesn't come out. It is, disinformation is simply another method of stonewalling and that's been used consistently for the last 50 years or so. Uh, weather balloons over Roswell as opposed to uh, a crashed craft of some sort. That's disinformation. Uh, we've seen that for 50 years and it's the best way to hide something. It shouldn't be any more of an effect that ETs have come here than that we have gone to the moon. Okay, it's just a part of the way things are. And <clears throat> we have to understand it and put it in context of the story of ourselves, our knowledge base of cosmology, the nature of our existence, who are we, how does the world work? And of course, that knowledge does change our understanding of how the world or the universe at large works because until the current period or until the last 30 years, 
it was conventional wisdom both in science and theology we're alone in the universe the whole the single repository of life anywhere in the, the known universe well no one believes that anymore that changes our concept of who we are and how we fit and it's becoming very clear that the way we have conducted ourselves as stewards of life on planet earth is wanting we haven't been good stewards we have environmental uh, global problems right now that are that are bringing civilization to a crisis and people don't want to hear that but it's slowly becoming obvious that that is true so this knowledge of who we are how we manage a planet how we fit into the larger scheme of things is a very important question dr greer did indeed uh, mount an, uh, an initiative and did go to, to washington did speak with uh, high-level government people did present some of the witnesses that we've talked about uh, there to give briefings and has asked for congressional hearings on these matters. I attended and helped him with that and I believe that's a very important effort that we get uh, congressional oversight of all of this but so far that hasn't happened. We briefed uh, certain members of Congress, some of their staff, some of the people from the White House we talked with people in the Pentagon, and uh, in general, it was well received, and some were quite amazed at what they heard, but so far, it hasn't resulted in any great activity. Did this come to, to news? Was this news to a lot of their ears? To some people, yes. Yes. Others, not really so much, uh, but I will say it led me to the belief that people in high-level government have very, very little, if any, information, valid information about this. Most have no more knowledge than the man in the street. Representatives from uh, the intelligence section, they were out of the loop of the things we're talking about. Does that come to a concern to you? Oh, yes, it's a very great concern. I have expressed this concern over and over. That's exactly what I'm saying is that whatever activity is going on, to the extent that it is a clandestine group, a quasi-government group, a uh, quasi-private group, it is without any type, as far as I can tell, of high-level government oversight. And that is a great concern.